Morning, lovely people. I uh, hope you're well uh, and hope you found time to uh, listen to this little thought as we continue uh, our series uh, on birds. Uh, this morning, uh, I want to focus on the hen, or maybe not so much the hen, but the character of the hen that the Lord Jesus uh, alludes to in this verse in Matthew. He repeats it uh, in Luke, uh, but I'll read the verse from Matthew. The Lord Jesus says, O oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the one who kills the prophets and stones those who are sent to her. How often I wanted to gather your children together as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings, but you were not willing. Here's the scene. The Lord is making that final journey to Jerusalem where he would uh, pay the price for our sins upon Calvary's cross. And he's just approaching Bethany. He's up in the hills. And as he comes round the corner, He's high up and then down below in the valley, Jerusalem reveals itself. And as Jesus uh, looks over Jerusalem, he utters this lament. How often I wanted to gather your children together as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings. But you are not willing under her wings. What's the definition of a bird? Well, the simple definition is this. It's a warm-blooded, egg-laying, vertebrate animal distinguished by the possession of feathers, wings, a beak, and typically being able to fly. So one of the recognising features of a bird is its wings. So why do birds have wings? What do they use them for? Well, the obvious one, I suppose, that comes to mind is for flight. Or for movement. So we're quite familiar with birds using their wings for flying. We see them going backwards and forwards uh, on the, the nuts and feeding uh, in the garden. I don't know what you've seen Today, I'm jealous of those who've got goldfinch. I keep putting the Niger seed out, but they, they don't seem interested. But also, we know that there are birds that don't fly, fly, like the ostrich and the penguin. But they still use their wings to get about and move. An ostrich will use them to steer like uh, rudders as they run fast. A penguin as well will twitch them left and right as they uh, superbly and with great agility swim through the ocean at great speeds. They also use them for balancing. Birds often, if you look at them, they perch and they perch with such elegance and ease, but should a short, sh sharp burst of wind come, you'll notice them lift a wing and angle it so they can remain steady and balanced. They're often used in defence in various ways. Obvious when we look at a swan or a geese and it's disturbed or feels threatened and it will raise them high, make themselves look bigger, uh, aggressive. But you know, there's a bird, the plover, and if it feels under threat, It'll stick its wing out and drag it on the floor as though it's broken, as though you really wouldn't want to bother with that bird. Very clever. Then there's hunting as well. Uh, I've just built a pond. I've got a decoy heron because I don't particularly want any herons uh, visiting my pond and eating my fish. And yet the African black heron, when it fishes and hunts, is amazing. It'll creep into the water 
and then it'll lift its wings, its enormous black wings. People are not sure exactly why they do this, whether it's sheltering for the sun so it can see better into the water, or whether the casting of the shadow creates a cooler spot and the fish come under it for refuge and then whoom, <laughs> it's got its prey, but very clever. We think of the peacock and we get another example of how a bird uses its wings for courtship as it lifts its colourful blue and green feathers in splendour and attracts a male. But all birds probably use their wings in this way more than any other, and that is to protect their eggs, to protect their young. Some uh, will even sit on their nests in the harshest of climates. I don't know if you've walked by the river recently and you've seen the eider duck sat upon its nest or sometimes they're out uh, in the open in the elements sat perched on their eggs or their newly hatched chicks but did you know this you can walk up to one and it will not move until you actually touch it or make physical contact with it such as its devotion to protecting its young so when Jesus uses this illustration of the hen and her wings and gathering up her chicks, this wasn't a new metaphor, a new simile. This was something that uh, weaves throughout the scriptures of the Old Testament. And it was a familiar analogy that the hearers would have would have understood. Let's quickly read some verses and, and think of the wings, especially in connection with the wings of God. Ruth is told this by Boaz, the Lord repay your work and a full reward be given you by the Lord God of Israel, under whose wings you have come for refuge. Ruth was a Moabitess. She wasn't a Jew. So it's interesting that the first reference of God's wings in the Bible is an inclusive place. In the Psalms, Psalm 17 verse 8, Keep me as the apple of your eye. Hide me under the shadow of your wings. It's a resting place. Psalm 36 verse 7. How precious is your loving kindness, O God. Therefore, the children of men put their trust under the shadow of your wings. It's a loving place, a precious place. Psalm 57. Be merciful to me, O God. Be merciful to me, for my soul trusts in you. And in the shadow of, of your wings, I will take my refuge until these calamities have passed by. It's a merciful place, a safe place. Psalm 61 verse 4. I will abide in your tabernacle forever. I will trust in the shelter of your wings. It's a trustworthy place. Because you have been my help, therefore in the shadow of your wings I will rejoice. It's a joyful place. He shall cover you with his feathers and under his wings you shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. It's a shield in place. Isaiah uses the illustration. He says he will pass through Judah. He will overflow and pass over. He will reach up to the neck and the stretching out of his wings will fill the breadth of your land. 
O Emmanuel. In one verse, two references to the Passover of Egypt and the protection of God's wings. You see, it's a powerful place. Molokai, the last prophet of the Old Testament. But to you who fear my name, the son of righteousness shall arise with healing in his wings. And you shall go out and grow fat like stall-fed calves. You see, it's a healing place. A place of provision. You see, as Jesus hung upon the cross... It's no coincidence that his arms were stretched out like a bird lifting its wings. Why? Because the shelter, protection, there's refuge under there. And many have found it whom to Jesus have fled. So remember our verse, O Jerusalem, Jerusalem. The one who kills the prophets and stones, those who are sent to her. How often I wanted to gather your children together as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings. But you are not willing. Where's your place of refuge today? Is it under the wondrous wings of Christ, the amazing God of heaven? I hope it is. Enjoy your day. Keep your eye out for those various birds that might be uh, flying about, protecting themselves, guarding themselves or even displaying. And may we rest in the knowledge of God's love. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, bless us this day. Keep us safe. Protect us. Cover our loved ones with your precious wings because we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen.